Hello, this is Eric. I will show some slides of a trip in the Provence that I did in autumn. I followed a route, a route of a good friend of mine, Paul Benjaminse. He makes books of cycle routes all through Europe. I will show you the website later. I happen to be around. My brother has a holiday house in the south of France and I uh, enjoyed very much being there, like it's very quiet, this is the view. You can see that this, it's autumn, so um, the sun was out most of the time, I must say, and I'm talking about, like I started the trip the second week of uh, November. Um, going to the little house, I had uh, a bit of rain, like I was camping here at this uh, riverbank. And, um, well, bad weather often has very beautiful scenery, like uh, this golden light, uh, the everything, like all nature is uh, kind of varnished, like colors are very intense and beautiful. So uh, don't l let you be encouraged. I will talk about the weather a bit later. Basically, I went from Avignon, which is at the very left, uh, almost to Nice. That was the first etap. And um, don't expect to see many people there. Th uh, this is, by the way, the, an overview of all the trips that uh, Paul is doing. You can visit his website at the Cycling Europe dot nl she was the only person who was traveling on a bicycle in the 10 days i was on the road she was visiting friends in uh, uh, ex uh, ex en provence so Autumn is beautiful, like the colors, the, the light is very warm often, the temperatures are not so bad, the grapes are getting uh, uh, ready to be, to be harvested. And I, I, I can't, like I was a bit lucky, there was uh, three days of rain in the weather forecast, so I thought, well, Maybe I find a place to shelter uh, for those three days, just uh, hit the road. This is a plant that you see all the time. It's it's like a little bonfire in the in the woods from the, from a distance. This is a example of uh, how Paul is making his roots, like he is uh, looking for. Um, tracks without any traffic, like this old uh, railway road that they covered with a, a bicycle path. And what I did in the in the beginning, I went to a place called Roussillon. There is uh, a lot of uh, ochre, ochre, the pigment. Um, this region has two major places where they, uh, where I find it. Um, this is a place on the uh, road to Roussillon, so all the buses, they uh, they pass here and on the bicycle, it's wonderful, you can stop and uh, check it out a bit. Behind here, there's actually a national park in which you can stroll for ages and uh, enjoy this uh, wonderful color. The whole village of uh, Roussillon is kind of in that uh, color. And there is a balcony close to the city center. Well, it's basically a tiny town. And there you can uh, you can see how the weather played with the, the mountains and the structures. This is me um, after two days of cycling, so I still look kind of okay. The night was, yeah, it was cold, it was maybe four degrees and uh, the campsite was actually closing. So that was the last night of the uh, campsite. But hotels and stuff, it's all 
open and quite empty in uh, in these days. So the French people they like to take it easy and chat and enjoy the good life. And this is some uh, dew on the in the fields in the morning light. And this is a flea market. I think there was some national holiday, which is always good to know because then the shops are closed. My lovely bicycle with a little autumn bouquet in the, on the handlebar back. And well, obviously the good thing about cycling in autumn and in November is that you can do your Christmas uh, shoppings. Little little dolls like these, they, they might easily fit in your pen your bag. Yeah, I I rushed to this place because there was still a bit of sunlight on the on the top of the mm. church. But it was too late. Like it's only a little flock and uh, and then there was a very steep climb after this and I didn't want to do that, so there was a blonde girl called Isabel, and she took me in her car, or actually her boss's car. So I could, um, at the very last of the day, I could uh, enjoy the ride in the van. So Isabel is uh, is in the car, and this is the boss, a farmer, a local farmer. And he brought me to this uh, plateau where there was sun again. And all I needed to do is find some wood or any place to uh, pitch my tent. I love camping in the wild. And I wanted to wake up early because uh, the Lac Saint-Croix, a beautiful lake that I visited as a, as a teenager, um, I wanted to be there so I would have uh, good sunlight. Hunters, it's a hunting season. So you see them, uh, and sometimes you know you hear the rifles uh, shooting. And this is a town. Can't remember the name now, but it's uh, very close to the Lac Saint Croix. And you see in between the birds, there's this uh, chain with a star, which is the star of Bethlehem, uh, hung by a local historical figure who was on a crusade to um, the holy country and this was his uh, gesture to be immortal. So Lac Saint Croix is a, a, a artificial lake, like there's a power, a power plant, um, uh, like they make electricity from the falling water like a lot of uh, places in uh, in the south of France. This is the beginning from the Gorge du Verdon. I decided to do the Gorge even though the weather would become bad the next day. But I just wanted to do it. I knew it from, from a car trip uh, twice. And... Um, Oh, this is some some morning light still. And this is me. I couldn't resist uh, taking a jump into the water. Actually, I stayed there for 10 minutes and it was cold, but somehow very refreshing. And uh, um, in the company of these uh, Austrian people who took my picture. So in the back you see the plateau where I had uh, been spending the night and now I'm moving away from the lake to the gorge. The gorge is quite impressive. It's always hard to take, to take pictures of uh, how impressive actually a uh, gorge can be. There is a road at the op opposite side. You can also choose that one. Paul decided for this one. And, um, well, if you feel like you can make a round trip. So, 
on the top hand side of the image you see the the road climbing like the climbing is not too tough i not sure how that would be in the midst of uh, July, but um, anyhow, it's not too difficult for a more or less trained cyclist. So here, here the gorge is uh, getting very narrow. You can hire a canoe if you f uh, want to. You can uh, paddle down all the river that is down there. And this is towards the end of the gorge. There's one last climb, and then we got to this uh, other plateau. And it was about time to look for a place to spend the night. And there was a campsite. Uh, I asked, are you open? And she said, well, since you're here, we're open, no problem. Uh, guess what? I paid four euros for my tent and myself could have a warm shower and the next day indeed it was it was cloudy it was um, there was uh, rain threatening all the time but in fact there was only a few drops that I had uh, during the day and like here I had this few drops and then nature becomes so so vibrant. Uh, so I don't mind really. As long as I'm not cold, I'm I'm fine with it. Then I had to leave this valley to go into the next one, like a little pass route. And this is the beginning of that valley. And from there I had, I don't know what, 14 kilometers or so only going down. So time for a selfie. And enjoying the ride, like there was this autumn all over the place, all the time. With hardly any paddling. And it was heading south, and it was um, getting lower and lower, so temperature slowly came to very nice, uh, well, Dutch summer temperature level. The funny plants again. And here was another gorge that uh, would lead me to the end of the first section of, uh, of the trip. That was four days, I guess. And I bumped into these, uh, well, happy people. They invited me to drink and to smoke since I was from Amsterdam and whatever. And I was curious, you know, I was curious because they said that they lived at the level of the river. So, yeah, it was a little paradise. And I didn't take all their invitations, though. I, in fact, had... Uh, uh, had found a uh, family in the next village, they would host me and I could stay there for that mm. for that day where there would be really a lot of rain. And so this is after four days of cycling in autumn. So yeah, it definitely is a bit more challenging to um, travel off season. And that day of rain, you will see in the next part a few images that uh, you can understand, like, oh, this was serious rain. It was on the news, like it was really, um, at places it was really awful. <laughs> 